In this video, you are going to learn how to compress the size of your images for free and why this is really important. If you run a website or a blog, then you'll know that you need to incorporate images into the posts and pages that you make. It looks nice and it helps with SEO. However, a lot of images, especially if they are not sized correctly, can put a lot of stress on your website. It can cause it to load slowly. So it's really best practice to compress your image size. However, doing so can also alter the quality as well, and we don't want to do that. So we're gonna learn how to compress the images that you create, make them smaller in size, and still retain the quality. But before we do that, let's do the prize draw to see who wins a free copy of this course, which is called Quick Video Creation. Now, Quick Video Creation is not for sale anywhere, however, if you left a comment on my previous video, which was all about getting YouTube topic ideas for small channels, then I promised that I would enter you into a prize draw. So we're gonna go over here to this YouTube random comment picker. We'll fill in this little capture and we'll click on get YouTube comments. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna hit start and let's see who wins a free copy. Okay, congratulations, the free radicals. If you can reach out to me, either on Facebook or go to my YouTube channel about section, there'll be an email address, get in touch, and I will give you a free copy of Quick Video Creation. So congratulations, and now let's crack on with the video. To demonstrate this, I'm going to be using an image that I created in Canva. You don't have to use Canva at all. It can be any image that you've got from anywhere. So this is actually the thumbnail for this YouTube video. Now, if I was to click on share and click on download, I get a variety of different options for the file type. Now, PNG files are the best quality when it comes to complex images. However, if I were to download the PNG file and just click on download, the quality would be fine, but this, whereas for YouTube, it's fine because YouTube's gonna host the image if it's a thumbnail. If I wanted to use this on a website, it's not going to be the best because it's gonna to be too big. Now, just to show you this, if I come over here to this website, Tiny PNG, and again, I'll share all the links below in the description and just drag and drop this in here. You can see that it's a very big file size, 666 KB. Now, personally, and this is just me, I want to have all of my images not go over 100 KB because the higher that they get, the more stress they put on my website. Now, if I download this, this is a resized compressed version and then double click it, it kind of looks okay, but it's still above that 100. And if I keep doing this, so I then drag the resized image and keep compressing it, it's gonna to get to a point where I'm not gonna get it any smaller, and that's because it's a PNG file. So the other option is I go and try and get a different version. So I click on download and I'll switch to a JPEG. Now JPEGs by default are smaller in size, but sometimes you can lose the quality. So let's download the JPEG. Let's come back over here and let's put put that in there. You can see by default it's smaller now, it's 131. And now we've got it to round about 100. Now, if I was to click on download here, which is the new compressed image and open this up, it looks okay, but I can see, maybe you can't see it, but it just looks a little bit, you know, blurry around some of the words. It's not too bad, but it could be better. Now, despite all this, the best image file to use for your website is not a PNG nor a JPEG, it's WebP. These are less bulky and they load much faster and website speed is very important. Now, this is a great free tool that will convert your files to any format. So I'm just gonna go and drag a random PNG file and drop it in there. And we can see it's a very big file size. And then I'm gonna click on this and under image, I wanna click on WebP. Then I'll hit convert and we'll wait for this to do its thing. And eventually it's going to provide us with a new file size, which will be slightly smaller. And if it's over a hundred, we can then drop this into tiny PNG just to get it down a little bit more. So now we have our WebP file, we can click on download and then we can come back to tiny PNG and we can compress this particular image and it's down now to 56.3. And if we download this one and then open this up, we have our nice looking 
WebP file that we can then use on our site. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please let me know below. I'll leave all of the links to the websites that I mentioned in this video in the description. Other than that, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care.